Hey, this is Dr. Barry. Let's discuss for a few minutes. Is your diet causing your joint pain, your arthritis, your DJD, your osteoarthritis? Is that possible that your diet could be causing it or making it worse or damaging your joints permanently? That's a great question. We need to talk about this. So let's dive right in. There are absolutely millions of people in the United States and other parts of the world who suffer from severe debilitating arthritis in their joints. And arthritis is just a word that means inflammation inside the joint, okay? Now, so many people think that they it's from wear and tear. They've worn their joints out. I've just, I've worked so hard. I've stood on my feet. I've wore my joints out. That's completely inaccurate. That's a myth. That's not true at all. And we're gonna talk about this in this video. Now, if you know someone who suffers from arthritis or joint pain chronically, please share this video with them. Share it on Twitter, share it on LinkedIn, share it on Facebook. You're welcome to share this video because it helps me to help so many other people. Now, let's talk about this. First of all, let's let's just completely destroy this wear and tear myth, okay? Your joints are not like rocks. They are constantly being regenerated, renewed. New cells are coming, old cells are dying, cartilage is being replaced all the time. Now, many orthopedic surgeons would love for you to believe that once your joints formed and you're an adult, that's it. It never gets any better. It just only gets worse with time because you, you wear it out, right? And so if you have a very uh, physically exertional job, you're, you're a factory worker, you worked a lot of menial or hard labor, you feel like, oh, I've just worked so hard, I have worn my joints out. Your body is not like a car. The more you drive your body, it doesn't wear out, okay? You shouldn't keep your body in the garage. That doesn't work for the human body. The human body, the human joints are constantly rejuvenating and repairing and renewing if you're feeding your body the correct diet, and if you're using your joints appropriately, okay? So do not believe the wear and tear myth. That is a lie that doctors tell patients, especially doctors who get paid very well to chop out joints and put in new artificial joints. Not true at all. There's absolutely zero research that backs up the wear and tear myth. That is not true whatsoever. Okay, and I'm going to tell you about my personal experience in my clinic with people improving their joints with diet. Now, let's talk about this. Of course, you know, I recommend the ketogenic way of eating or a low carb, high healthy fat or even a carnivore diet. For different people, these diets are ideal for them. And I have had numerous patients at the Berry Clinic, some who were on the knee replacement surgery list like on the waiting list, getting ready to have a knee replaced, I said, you know what, before you do that, please just eat keto for three months for me. And I'm going to tell you the foods to remove completely out of your diet and see if we can't get these joints better. And many of those patients have left the surgeon waiting. They called and canceled that appointment because their joints were so much better that they wouldn't even dream of having knee or hip replacement surgery. So let's talk about the foods when you eat a ketogenic way that you're going to completely remove from your diet. And I'm going to try to list these in order of most important to lesser importance. By far and away, the most important thing to do is to slash your carbohydrates hydrate intake. Because when you do that, you keep your blood sugar and your serum insulin levels both very low normal. And that's where they need to be. When your blood sugars are chronically high, that absolutely inflames and damages the lining of your joints. When your insulin levels are chronically high, that absolutely damages and inflames the lining of your joints. And so you want to eat as low carb as you possibly can. And that's going to decrease your blood sugar and decrease your serum insulin level, both of which will calm down the inflammation in your entire body, but also in all of your joints. Another thing that you've got to get out of your diet is grains of any type. Now, a lot of people already have caught on to the fact that wheat can be very inflammatory. Processed wheat foods can really inflame all parts of your body, from your gut to your brain to your joints. And so definitely the wheat has got to go. Wheat is not a food for human beings. You can eat wheat products to keep from starving to death, but they don't really help you in many other ways whatsoever. Cut the wheat out of your diet, cut the rice out of your diet, cut the corn out of your diet, and cut the oats out of your diet. All of these grains have defense proteins built into them to try to keep animals from eating them, and those proteins inflame 
different parts of your body. And for many, many of my patients, it's been their joints that get the inflammation. And for many people, stopping the grains makes a noticeable difference in their joint stiffness and pain and swelling. So please try that. The next thing is vegetable oils. Canola, safflower, soybean, corn oil, peanut oil. Any of these oils are inflammatory. They have a terrible omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, which can really, really wreak havoc on all your body parts, especially your joints. And so you've got to get the vegetable oils. you got to get the Crisco, the Parquet, the, the Country Croc. I can't believe it's not butter. All that crap needs to go in the garbage. You need to use real butter, bacon grease, avocado oil, olive oil, those types of things. The next thing is liquid dairy. And this comes from a reformed milk baby. I used to drink a gallon of milk a day when I played football in high school, thinking it was good for me, good for my bones, good for my joints. Now I know, looking back, that when I was in my mid-30s, my joints were killing me. And part of the reason was all the dairy I was drinking. And so the only dairy that I use and the only dairy I recommend you use is butter, ghee, full-fat cheeses, and maybe heavy whipping cream. But anything less fat than that is just going to have too much lactose and too much of the potentially inflammatory milk proteins in it that could inflame your joints. Another thing that people find that inflame, inflames their joints is nightshades. This is tomatoes, uh, potatoes, peppers, eggplants, and several other little uh, members of this species. You, uh, you, if you're still, if you've done a lot of the, these things right, but you're still having joint inflammation, I would try a two or three month trial of eating no nightshades whatsoever and see if your joints don't get better. And then one more thing is legumes, beans and peas. A lot of people think these are really healthy foods. They're moderately carbohydrate on the, on the carb levels. Uh, some people can eat them. Some people can't when it comes to just weight loss and carb count. But I've had people say, you know, my joints kept bugging me until I stopped the beans and peas, and then my joints got so much better. So if you're still having trouble with the joints, I would stop all beans and all peas for two to three months and see what that does. And so therefore, the proper diet that's going to actually give your joints all the nutrition they need to reju rejuvenate and renew is a ketogenic way or the low-carb, high-healthy fat, or even the carnivore diet. Any of these are going to give you the nutrition you need to rebuild healthy joints, and they're not going to cause inflammation in your body and in your joints that could lead to that severe arthritis. Now, all the treatments that doctors have, the bullets we have in our gun, right, the prescription pad and the scalpel, all of those things are temporary fixes, right? If you take anti-inflammatories or if you take steroids, those block your inflammatory cascade at certain points. And inflammation, chronic inflammation is a bad thing, but to stop it with a pharmaceutical pill is not a victory, okay? You might have pain relief, but you're damaging your kidneys and other organs by taking these medications chronically, and you do not want to do that. I've had patients who take ibuprofen or Celebrex or, or Mobic for years and years and say, oh, yeah, it really helps my arthritis, doc. Just keep giving me refills of that, only to come up a few years later with kidney damage. And I'm like, yeah, remember I told you, you don't need to be taking those every day. But they did because it made the pain go away. It was a quick fix. It was a Band-Aid. And instead of trying to figure out the underlying cause, they just wanted the quick fix. And I would highly caution you not to look for the quick fix, whether it's an anti-inflammatory, whether it's a chronic steroid that you take, whether it's an opiate, a narcotic that you take. We have a huge narcotic problem in the United States right now because people are trying to just mask the inflammation and pain instead of fixing the underlying problem. And then we have a, a billion dollar surgery industry that will replace your knee or your thumb joint or your shoulder or your hip if the inflammation gets so bad that you just can't stand the pain. Almost none of those surgeries are truly necessary when you're eating the, 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 the appropriate human diet and you're using your joints, you're moving them, okay? Remember back to where I was talking about the car analogy. You don't wear your joints out by using them. Basically, you need to go by the mantra, you either use them or you lose them. That's how you need to think about your joints. And so I'm not advocating skydiving or bull riding, 
but you do need to be active. You need to go for a daily walk. You need to lift some weights. Those things will help you repair, rejuvenate, regenerate your, your, the cartilage lining of your joints. I've had patients who were bone on bone in their knee and the orthopedic surgeon said, there's no other choice except for a knee replacement. Nothing else will help you. And I've seen these patients change their diet, change their activity, maybe get some prolotherapy or PRP. And within a year's time, they've got beautiful cartilage in that joint again. It's absolutely possible. I've seen it happen. It can happen for you as well. Okay. So please, before you start taking uh, taking a narcotic or a steroid chronically or an anti-inflammatory chronically or have joint replacement surgery, please try three months of a ketogenic diet and being more active. And then at the end of that time, if your joints are no better, so be it. Go do what you're going to do to start with. But please give the proper way a three-month trial before you slap a Band-Aid on it. Okay. Now, if you enjoyed this, please click the subscribe button. I think it's right down there and click the little bell beside it so that when I have a bright idea, you'll be one of the very first to be notified about it. Also, you may already have known this about me, but I don't get a penny from big food or big pharma or big medicine. None of those guys really like me that much because I don't work for them. I work for you right? And if you'd like to help me have more time to make videos just like this, click on my Patreon link. It's right down there. You can sign up very quickly and you can throw a buck or two my way so that I have more time to make more videos just like this. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.